We good? All right, man. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for making time to be here. Uh, you're you're one of the biggest supporters of the podcast, so it's good to uh, finally have you as a guest, Owen. Um, oh, it's great to be here. Thank you, man. Um, you know, I uh, I was thinking about it, and I spent many a night at uh, East Hall <laughs> watching TV with you in the lobby. And with all the time that I spent with you, uh, you know, we had a lot of in-depth conversations, and I'm glad that we could document one tonight. So what um, – tell me, uh, UND was the only school that I applied to. <laughs> what ultimately brought you there for your college decision? Uh- Actually, the funny thing is, it was kind of on a whim. Um, I applied to IU and Ball State and UND, all the Indy schools. Um, IU seemed a bit, it felt a bit too big. And I, I just wasn't sure whether I wanted to go there or not. And then my mom mentioned UND. And at first I, I kind of laughed it off because I didn't want to go to a D2 school. Right. I wanted to <laughs> see like the big, uh, like the t- t- D1 sports and at the college game day kind of experience sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in the end, I, I didn't feel much like going to Ball State either. And so in the end, I just chose to give UND a shot. And mm-hmm. really, it did not take me long to feel right at home. Well, and, uh, you know, I, before getting to college, I didn't spend longer than a weekend away from Chucha Marie. So it was sort of an adjustment to live in a dorm and an upperclassman at dorm at that, you know, so I'm moving in as a freshman because, uh, you know, the upperclassmen dorms were the only ones with uh, handicapped accessible rooms. So, you know, that was definitely a perk as a freshman getting to uh, hang around upperclassmen, but what, how much of an adjustment was it for you to live on campus and, and have that as a reality? <laughs> well, I have to admit it was tough at first. Um, yeah. Even though my parents only lived 20 or so minutes away. So it's not like I was that far. Um, yeah. But first couple of weekends, I went home every weekend. Um, and so that just felt right. But then after a while, I started staying on weekends. Right. And I, there was nothing I enjoyed more than hanging out in the the lobby my freshman year. Like, I made a promise to myself to just get myself out there. And I spent a, long a long time in the lobby at warren hall and it really it did wonders for me and my uh confidence it was yeah yeah well i i loved hanging out with you dude and i remember the first time meeting you i was i was sort of a deer in the headlights trying to just adjust to the college schedule and one of the things that i noticed about you was that uh you do have a stutter and i I just wanted to know because i have never really asked you or at least don't recall uh having a conversation about it has have you had a stutter since you were a little kid when did it start started when i was about two so ever since i could talk um and do stutters vary? I mean, is it certain things that you trip up on? For a long time, it was K and G sounds. Um, right now, I s- struggle saying words that start with the letter of 
HP. Uh -huh. um, and the thing about having a stutter is there's still, even with all the science uh, advances t today, no one really still knows the cause of a stutter. Mm. Um, stress can certainly play a role, but it's not the main cause of it. And yeah, sometimes like I, I just know when it's coming and I can, and it's hard to stop. Like, um, but it, it is what it is. So what are the, um, best therapies for it? Cause I can recall even when I was in elementary school having uh, speech therapy and I needed help holding a pencil <laughs> and being able to, to write. I mean, there's, there's certain therapies that you want to probably give someone at a young age so that they can get better. Speech therapy wise, so I did it for years yeah. when I was a kid, and I remember a lot of the exercises work with your tongue and strengthening your mouth, strengthening your mouth muscles. Right. Um, there's one exercise where you kind of where you learn where you learn to stutter on purpose and um i wish i could remember the exact logic behind that but it helps with your with trying to control it um and what I remember, remember most is basically working on my mouth muscles. Well, I can remember uh, talking with you in East Hall and one of the, you know, when you get to a college campus, one of the first questions anybody will ask you is like, what, what's your major? <laughs> and when you told me communication and I had been talking to you for a while, I, I immediately thought to myself, putting myself in your shoes i'm like communication knowing that a lot of it is is verbal i mean it, did you consider doing something else or, or no well so when i started communication right like the common joke is i did it to avoid math <laughs> right yeah that's is, me too exactly yeah <laughs> and that actually is part of the reason why. Yeah. Uh, but the, the main reason was I knew that I had a talent for uh, writing. Yeah. And so I wanted to work on that. And also at the time, I couldn't really think of another major right like i wasn't a kid that grew up saying i i want to be a doctor i want to be a firefighter or a, a cop right i just um it, it was the major where i felt like i could thrive in this i could really be good and um i'd say that's why i chose it yeah we're gonna get into uh some of your accomplishments including some of the awards that you won uh during your time at und which i was there to witness but you know i was thinking about when i was there on campus and you know uh when you're when you're 18 years old 18 19 years old you think that you're invincible that you can do it all on your own and you certainly don't want help from uh, your parents or, or family. Was it sometimes hard to ask for help knowing that you want to be independent on a college campus? Because sometimes you do need that and, and there's no shame in that. 
Um, so I'm lucky enough to say that there weren't that many times where I had to ask right. for help. Um, like there, there are plenty of times where when I'm having a conversation with someone that, that I just met, I will tell them that, Oh, um, sorry, I have a stutter. And it's not that I want to apologize for it. It's just a force of habit. Um, and yeah. usually they, understand um and then sometimes that helps the conversations run a bit more smoothly right when they uh, understand and so sometimes i had to say that to, to help with conversations but other than that um my stutter really didn't play that that much of a role at least at the start um i want to go back to uh your writing uh real quick who were some of your uh favorite authors growing up that you read and kind of modeled your style after well, uh, Harry Potter was my childhood. Um, <laughs> awesome, yeah. Uh, I will say that uh, I have some issues with with uh, J.K. Rowling, um, but um, just in terms of really enjoying to read um that's how i really learned to read um and that and there was a huge thomas the the tank engine book that i carried around everywhere Uh, (laughs) cool yeah um but like as far as my uh teens go um i'd like to say that i was a really avid reader Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the books i read i just read for school (laughs) i'm fair enough to admit that too you know uh of mice and men like all the all the ones you would typically read in high school that's all i typically read Um, but (laughs) i did read a lot of uh manga which um which i personally think that like i've i've noticed that manga is a great outlet for people that tend to not like to read those long long books and they'll they'll read some manga and find out hey i I actually enjoy reading. I just had to find the s- certain medium that fit well with me. Forgive me. What's what's manga? I'm trying to recall. It is. Um, so you, you know what um, it, anime is. Yes. Yes, I do. Um, it is the books that the that every anime is based off of um there there uh they're also known as as a graphic novels oh okay cool i didn't i haven't delved too much into uh anime but i wanted to make sure we clarified that um you know i was thinking about too 
one of the proudest moments that I had for you as your friend, because I witnessed it, was um, your senior project and the capstone project that we all had to do as UND communication majors. You take something that you did uh, throughout your undergrad career, revamp it, and then present it amongst a panel of the professors in our department. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's a pretty scary moment for some students to have to face the teachers that you've, uh, you know, been molded by for the past four years. But what do you recall about that day and, and having to, to do that project? One thing I re- re- remember actually is right when I was about to start speaking, I saw Jean yeah. and she was just there with a smile and just <laughs> was <laughs> waiting for me to start. And that actually helped a lot. Um, and like, um, I mean, not every professor at that table was smiling. <laughs> uh, so, um, and if you re- remember, I got through it, but yeah. it was uh, it w- it was a bit of a struggle in terms of like. Hey, man. Uh, yeah. Um, but I'm grateful that I only got one question, and um, <laughs> yeah. It was from, um, who was it from? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Uh, was it Audrey? It was Audrey. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think you said, uh, I'll get back with you, which was like our escape, our escape valve to tell a professor if we didn't know the answer. Well, that yeah. and uh, they were pretty like strict about like, reminding us which professors were, which professors were doctors yes you had to preface that preface that um yeah. throughout and one thing that uh tripped me up because it's, it's sort of like jeopardy you had to also repeat the question back to the audience so it was uh professor eaker asked what is the definition of communication uh, and then go into your answer. And if you forgot to repeat the question, that was a, that was a doc on your score. Um, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's like public speaking in front of the masters essentially. And they have to, if you don't pass, you don't graduate. So that, that's the kind of pressure that was on them. Well, yeah. and I considered myself really grateful that I was able to see the best of the best of the best yes and will schnabel uh, <laughs> yeah absolutely and, uh, and i mean that like that helped too like so i'm working on getting will on the show he's a hard get you know his uh, his appearance fee is almost outside my reach you know so <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if he eventually comes on I'll just document it here. He interned for both The Onion and Conan O'Brien, folks. So that, that tells you just how brilliant uh, Will is. And, and hopefully we talk to him. If not, we love him and uh, wish him well. So um, one other moment I can recall is when you signed up for uh, Applied Radio. And I know a lot of people think about, you know, Applied Radio as being an air personality and being on the air. But there are different roles that people can perform at a station and still contribute. Uh, you proved that in your semester there. Yeah, it was, I admit the choice, it didn't come without hesitation. Like, right. Just because <laughs> it is hard to be in radio if you have a stutter. I mean, that's just, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, I was worried about how it might affect me, but for those that don't know, I have a strong affinity for sportscasters and yeah, man. Who are who are some of your favorites? Well, like um, 
Al Michaels, uh, yep. uh, and um, Dan Shulman, Tim Brando, um, Kevin Harlan, um, uh, yep. Ian Eagle, um, Jim Nance. Oh, yeah. And, like, I would, when I was growing up, I would study, uh, <laughs> like, Me too. Yeah. all the different broadcasters. Like, um, one of my favorites, the, the, the longtime Yankee radio broadcaster, John Sterling, um, Everyone likes to poke fun at him sometimes because of his very over-the-top home run calls. But right. um, he's done it for so many years, and he's a master. And just just hearing all the different sportscasters in every different sport, that alone just – told me I had to take at least one semester of radio just because it's maybe my my all-time favorite art form absolutely man and you know it's it's good to have uh the background knowledge and because of you I, I probably watched more baseball than I ever expected to uh and I wanted to know because I know uh, UND softball has a special place in your heart. Was it before or after the radio experience that you did the PA announcing for UND softball? Uh, it was time. after I graduated. Oh, um, okay, cool. I sent an e- email to one of the uh, communication uh, employees in the athletic department asking if they needed any help with anything. And he said, Hey, how about you be the PA guy for softball? And I said, yeah, sure. And so um, that was also a pretty wild journey because I was really nervous about that for the same reason. Right. And I mean, I definitely had my struggles with that too. Um, But I am really glad I did it. Right. One of the uh, things that I remember about living at East Hall that was kind of cool, we were right next to uh, the baseball and softball field in proximity. Although, and I regret this to this day, I I didn't go to to many games. Um, Tell me, what, um, how important is UND softball when you think back on your UND experience? UND softball meant, well, it all started when my friend Morgan, uh, she was Morgan Foley back then. Now she's Morgan Ort. Um, she, she asked me if I would like to come and see her play. And so I went to see her play one day and I just like, I told myself, man, this is, uh, this is really fun. Like, and this place is so close to my dorm. And so I went to another game and then another and I, um, I, I started to, to uh, meet more players and I formed more friendships um, yeah. and just it became a big part of my life, just that team and program. And um, I'm still close with uh coach frost 
and I still go to plenty of games. Um, and, and of course it's, it, it, it's a bit different now. Um, but I still greatly enjoy it. Yeah, dude. And I, one thing that I, uh, enjoyed, uh, was getting to meet the entire team and I knew them individually, but you know, hardly ever are they in a group. Uh, and they, they all came, uh, I want to document this. They all came to your graduation party. Was that, was that yeah. the reason we were there? Yeah, man. Uh, that, that was really awesome <laughs> to see yeah, them all that, there. That was one of the happiest moments of my life. It, it was really, yeah. it was really great. Surrounded by love, dude. That's that's awesome. Um, one thing too, uh, I was just thinking about with with your stutter. I can I can remember turning twenty one, and you were still there uh, when I had my twenty first birthday, and you came to my dorm, and you're like, Jimmy, I, I would love to go out with you for your twenty first birthday, but it's not really my scene. And I'm a guy I hardly ever went out uh, before I was 21. Didn't drink a drop of alcohol until that first night. And I'm like, dude, it's not my scene either. But uh, <laughs> I, what do you? Did you have fun that one night that we went out, dude? I wish you would have gone out more. That honestly is one of my biggest r regrets. Um, the truth is, I had a l lot of anxiety about just going out and the truth is I let it control me for a long time and um and but that night I <laughs> I am r r really glad it didn't yeah I can, uh if you don't mind you mind if I tell what I can recall from from witnessing <laughs> that night with you dude we we were at uh what well, i'm trying to think uh kilroy's getting breadsticks which if you come to indianapolis and you're having a great night you're drunk at the end of the night great way to finish is uh with some breadsticks from kilroy's and you downed uh one of those long island iced teas dude and i i had never seen you drunk ever and it was just hilarious just to see you in that state <laughs> I remember being very happy and being completely unable to put the credit card in the uh, in the pocket. Yeah, <laughs> it was, uh, you know, it was it was bold of you to go out there, man. And you know, we had plenty of trauma during the uh, during the Trump era. <laughs> what are some ways that uh, you deal with stress that help? One of my favorite things is to take a walk. Um, I often listen to music. Um, I watch sports. Sometimes I write. Yeah. Um, so I have some different things I do. Well, and I was thinking about writing. Uh, you know, I've done some comedic bits about like, uh, dating people with disabilities, uh, you know, comedians talk a lot about bringing the pain as far as your, as far as writing to heal. Have you wrote about some of the things you've struggled with and, and has that helped? Yeah. Um, so I've written a lot about, um, my, uh, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, um, and my struggles with, uh, depression and anxiety and sometimes it really helps to just get your thoughts on paper mm -hmm. um just because if they're stuck in your mind they are going to, to torment you to no end um and yeah and if you're able to express your thoughts then it can really make a world of difference and i don't know if you've seen it man that documentary uh stuts with uh, yeah. jonah hill and his therapist he's got some great uh 
methods that, that make it easier and, and help you deal with some pain. Cause I mean, a, a, an unfortunate reality, I think he says it in the documentary. It's like pain is a reality. That's what it's going to be. It's, it's just dealing with it on a day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. So um, let me see. Uh, you know, I also thought about politics. Uh, I, I mentioned the the trauma and the Trump era that we, we all collectively dealt with. Uh, I think we all have some form of PTSD with the pandemic. Uh, you know, I'm still in my den here doing most of my interviews through uh, Zoom. But, you know, Joe Biden uh, has a documented stutter. And I wondered uh, what you thought about that during the whole 2020 campaign. Just, I... I Trump's a bully and Joe dealt with him and the American people picked Joe over the bully. I, I was pers- personally very inspired by it. Um, just, yeah. I mean, he has a really good control over it. Like, um, yeah. it, you really don't see it. Um, and just the fact that he was able to navigate it and make it to the highest office in the land that was really um inspiring for not only me but i'm sure a lot of other stutterers out there just because it's a small part of who I am and it does not define me, but at the same time, it is a part of who I am. Just because everyone who meets me, they all, they'll notice right away because um, one of the things I stutter on most is my name. And so when I have to introduce myself, um, that's always a big moment of anxiety just because I know it's going to happen. But everyone is usually always very understanding, and I get through it. Well, and I'm proud of you, dude, for working at uh, the library and, and doing all of that, gaining all of that experience in your time. Uh, but I'm just thinking, uh, did you have any issues with employers uh, not having the patience to to hear you in an interview? I mean, I feel like that would be something you run into i'm not going to deny that i would not be surprised if some of the jobs i did not get it could be a part of the reason why i did not get it is because i have a stutter right and um and like I still have dreams about being a sportscaster, um, but the fact is, um, if I ever want to fulfill that dream, I'm going to have to go back to to, uh, speech therapy and really try and um, try to improve my handling of it simply because and it's not a, a truth I w- 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 want to say, but there's not going to be a r- radio station or really like, or a t- 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 TV station that is going to hire a person that, that stutters for a, for a, uh, broadcast and i mean that's just the unfortunate truth uh 
simply because the viewers just would it the viewers wouldn't like it well it it, it doesn't matter dude because you've stood out in such a positive way uh one of the mo- one of my proudest moments for you was I, I believe it was your senior year i believe that you were a sports information uh concentration within the communication uh department and you were named uh outstanding student in sports information that's great man i mean i i would feel like and i felt this way amongst my peers uh, that I had to work harder in order to stand out and, and feel like I, I got the most out of my education because of certain ailments beyond my control. You know? Well, and it's not like, so I want to be clear in saying that I do not want to say to any stutterers out there t- 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 to not chase their dream oh yeah it's just uh, it's just um and you know i i really hope that one day that a person that stutters can be a a a a a national broadcaster but it's but um and like this also goes back to a conversation that I had with with a certain uh, pr- professor uh, <laughs> who told me that me trying to succeed in radio is the same as him trying to dunk a basketball. Um, Poor analogy, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, and so. I gotta say that that really pissed me off. Um, yeah, and. But the truth is, I'm really proud of my knowledge of sports. And I think that I truth, I tr- tr- truth, truthfully think that if given the opportunity and if I could work my way up, I do think that I could be a good um, sports caster. I would just have to find a way. Hey, man, you've proven that you can cover sports. One of the things that you did in 2022, uh, as we enter the new year of 2023, uh, happy new year, by the way, brother. We're, we're kind of at that at the end of the first week of January. I don't know if we're past the threshold of when you could say happy new year, but uh, you know, you, you did uh, cover the FIBA uh, world championship as well as uh, the final four. I mean, Knowing you, dude, again, we, <laughs> you and I both did not go out very often. So thinking of you traveling those links, that had to, I mean, you grew as a person doing that sort of thing. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. That was absolutely incredible. Yeah. Traveling to Australia. And um, how long is that flight? 15 hours. Holy crap! Okay, did you have uh, did you have in plane entertainment or uh, you have to bring? Yeah, your- yeah, but unfortunately, I had the middle seat. Oh no! So you had to do this the whole time, yeah. just cross your arms yeah. the whole yeah, for fifteen yeah. hours, dude. And I felt trapped. <laughs> God, that's uh, you know, it reminds me of like Dumb and Dumber when they were frozen together on the scooter, like. Did you when you got up were your arms sore from from having to stick in that position? I would, yeah. My legs were sore. Yeah. 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 Um so once you get to Australia, how do they view Americans, by the way? <laughs> as far as I can tell, they love Americans. Like I saw yeah. so much American sports gear there. I mean, tons of sweatshirts and jerseys um i mean i i saw more than one steelers jersey <laughs> um yeah and um 
And every time I would talk to someone, they would say, oh my gosh, you're an American. <laughs> and, That's cool. And yeah. they would be really excited to talk with one. Um, and that, I mean, which I was grateful for just because I won't deny that for a few years, I, I felt like our standing in the world wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't it exactly <laughs> as great as it once was. Um, but yeah, apparently in Australia, it's still strong. Well, I was thinking with like gun control, they would hate us, you know, because they have one mass shooting and the government was like, nope, we're getting rid of all of them. Uh, and, you know, we, we continue. It continues to happen here on a on a daily basis. It doesn't even make the news cycle anymore. So <laughs> uh, as far as your New Orleans trip, uh, you were right there on on the court. Uh, did you get a chance to meet Jim Nance or any national uh, folks? I was able to meet the one and only Bill Raffery. Oh, dude. Awesome, man. And I shook his hand and I just, I simply told him, you're the best. (laughs) That's great. And I I was also able to meet uh, Seth Davis. um, And... I walked right by Bill Walton. Oh, so that would have been an interesting conversation for sure. That could go anywhere, no, knowing Bill Walton. <laughs> well, so. knowing Bill, I'm sure he, I'm sure he was stoned. Um, <laughs> but we sat right behind the CBS broadcast crew, and um, and I was able t- t- to be at. Coach K's final press conference. Yeah. Um, and just like it felt like I was on a different planet. Did you get a chance to ask a question in the scrum? <laughs> uh, not at the press conferences, um, simply because um, they're very sometimes select about who they choose and right you kind of have to earn your stripes first uh forgive me i probably should have done this uh sooner but what what are your current jobs on that year that you're currently holding i work in uh, so i work for the ruth lily medical library for the IU School of Medicine um, and content management, and so I'm I I basically work with all the content we have, and I make sure that it's accessible t- t- to all students and. And doctors, and I fill any article requests that anyone has um, for an article from a medical journal. Well, I only ask this because we are getting uh, increasingly closer to fascism in the United States. Uh, how important are libraries and like access to information? I think I feel like we take we take them for granted, but it is an invaluable resource. All of these libraries that citizens have at their disposal to learn different things and and uh, you know take action when we want to. <laughs> oh. Uh- Libraries are more important than ever, um, simply because for a number of people, especially in poverty, they are the only place for them to communicate with the outside world. Like um, yeah. they're the only place that has an internet connection. Um, 
for, for those that are homeless, a library can provide uh, uh, places where they 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 uh, they can go for shelter, and a library is also commonly used by people trying to find jobs. So it's really it is so much more than a place that has books and yeah. um, it's a place where people can just use resources that aren't that unfortunately aren't always available to those who need them the most. I'm really proud of you, man. You've grown a lot <laughs> in the last year, considering uh, all that you've been able to do. What have you learned about yourself since you've been able to, I mean, we haven't been able to chat uh, in a lot of time uh, since our UND days, but what have you learned about yourself since then? I don't think I would have believed 10 years ago, I would be here and documenting all the stories that I have. <laughs> I've learned that honestly, I, I, I can do a lot more than I think. Um, like I n never would have imagined being able to cover a Final Four or tr travel to Australia or write softball articles for for a national publication. Um, but for each of those opportunities, I just told myself that I was going to take the chance and really that's how things happen. And I especially feel good um, because like you said, when you have, whether it is a stutter or a something that um, it doesn't hold you back, but it's simply a part of who you are. Sometimes you feel like you have to work a lot harder. Um, and yeah. just the fact that I've been able to do all of this with a stutter it it's really great keep rolling brother uh what do you want for the future man i know that uh it's kind of scary with how close we were teetering uh to fascism in this last election cycle and i think we are getting toward a, a better future but what do you want for yourself well, I'd say my goal is to work for the IU athletic department in uh, Bloomington. Like, yeah, my dream is to have an office right by Assembly Hall. Um, but at the same time, I'd say my dreams constantly change. Um, but. For now, I'm working on getting my, my master's in sports journalism, and I would like to take that degree and for now um, find some collegiate athletic department or a professional team and um, – try and find my way into the field of sports. Um, have you had a chance to cover a game at Assembly Hall? Am I crazy? Uh, yes. I covered okay. an NCAA tournament game there. Right. Yeah. Um, I was surprised, like, how tall that building is. It's really tall. You know what I mean? Like, and, and it's uh, – I feel like the upper decks are on top of – what's on the bottom like it's sort of a slanted incline it's a very odd oddly constructed building um and, and very loud when, even when it's not full 
Uh, it's it's extremely loud. Yeah, um, my brother was there for the Christian Watford shot. Oh yeah, and <laughs> he rushed the floor w- w- with everyone else. Um, and my dad was there when uh, Coach Knight threw his chair. <laughs> okay, um, cool. So, my family has a has a lot of history uh, with that school. Um, my sister is currently majoring in uh, journalism there. Good school uh, for that. And I am definitely a proud Hoosier. Uh, I do want to document this too. Uh, your dad, Steve, uh, he has an interesting job. Uh, what what does he do for work? He works in corporate communication for Community Health Network. Okay, um, cool. So he works with, like, he helps to write the weekly newsletters. Um, he helps the C. EO and other higher ups with um, speeches or uh, or press releases, um, just important stuff like that. Didn't he write like the or help write the the dummy books too on, on different yes, subjects? Yes, yeah, he I thought does that as a, a freelance job. Um, okay. And, he has written God knows how many dummy sports by now. Um, what what topics do you has he done? Do you do you recall any? He usually focuses on what well, so he's written on topics from storm drains to <laughs> uh, really off the wall tech stuff. Um, yeah. So the books he writes are usually the smaller dummies books um, and certain books that are for a smaller niche. Um, And so, and that is always interesting because usually he, like he has to, learn about the topic because it's usually not a topic that he's <laughs> very well versed in so well it just it goes to show you i mean we we started this conversation saying that we took communication because you avoid math and that's <laughs> that is certainly true in, in my case but it goes to show you that uh Every organization needs probably at least one communication person. So, so don't write off uh, a degree as something simple because you need us at the end of the day, uh, yeah. folks. Um, Owen, uh, what would you say as a, as a lasting message uh, to folks that are dealing with anxiety, dealing with something that might be holding them back? What, what would you tell them? So... This is something that I also try and tell myself, um, but it's so easy to get uh, set in your comfort zone. Um, But in order to beat your anxiety and not just that, your depression as well, you, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Um, and for me, um, I mean, I've, I did that with a radio. I've done that with, um, with, I did that in Australia by asking questions at the press conferences there and by the end of the world cup the head coach of the team 
She knew my name, and and oh, for a and for a coach, that's pretty big. Um, and so, really, what it goes to show is sometimes you really don't know what you're capable of until you hmm. mm-hmm. give. something a shot and um i'm just i am very blessed um and i am a proud stutterer um and i just want to um take everything i've learned and to keep working there you go, man. Uh, being comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's going to be my mantra with uh, 2023, trying to make positive change. Um, for folks that would want to reach out, Owen, what's the best way to reach you? Well, uh, th- the best way to reach me is to either follow me on Facebook or Twitter or or uh, Instagram. That is and uh, and f- f- for me, it's pretty easy because my last name isn't exactly that common. So um, just w- whether you're on Facebook, Twitter, or Insta, just search me by my first name, Owen, and my last name, Kelbley, K-A-E-L-B-L-E. And I would very much welcome a, a, a follow and you you can enjoy uh, my softball articles as well on softball America um, dot com. All right, man. I love it. Um, I want to tell you, man, I, uh, you're the definition of a real friend. Uh, you're, you're one of the best ones I've got. And, uh, you know, I think about the people that came to dad's memorial and that happened in, uh, September of 2019. And then the pandemic happened in February of 2020 and my world changed. Uh, I didn't think the whole world would change in a matter of months. Uh, but with everything that's happened, um, you've been a constant for me and uh, I really appreciate you being transparent and sharing just part of your story. And I know it's, it's just the start brother. It's we're just getting going. So, uh, looking forward to more in the future. Well, I mean, as you always say, we're going to shock the world. That's right, baby. We're going to shock the world. (laughs) Oh, and, Dude, love you. Thank you for being on the show, and uh, please come back. We'll do this again, okay? That sounds great. Hey, folks, to uh, hear this again, you can head over to my website, jbkonair.com. You can also get the podcast anywhere by searching my initials, J-B-K-O-N-A-I-R. And if you feel so compelled, you can also donate to the podcast uh, with the link in the description. Until next time, have a great day and a better tomorrow.